Good show, guys. The goods. I like Good show. That was fun. That was fun. That was fun. That was fun. Oh, Pat. Hey, Pat. Oh, Pat, we we're getting there at eleven a.m. on Saturday. So the doors open up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like, are you going? Are you going down there Friday night? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to. Yeah. Okay. Well then, yeah. um, you want to get some breakfast in Saturday morning? Because I'm I'm going to get there. I'm probably going to leave the house like no later than six thirty because it's going to be uh, three hours for me. For I mean, sure. if you want to wait, if you want to wait that long to get breakfast, yeah. Bro, you are way ahead of schedule. Yeah, if you're leaving at six, that puts you there at about eight thirty. The nine, he's been yeah, fine though. Yeah. yeah, that puts you there about nine. So I mean, we can get breakfast. No, nah, right? no. If I if I leave at six thirty, that's going to put me there at about nine thirty. It's going to be a solid three hours. Yeah, that's fine then. Yeah, we can get breakfast if you want to wait that long. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. There's what a time would you get breakfast on a Saturday morning? Uh, well, I was just saying for the. If I had the three hour drive, I'm eating breakfast at like six forty five. <laughs> Hell. Um that's not there's, IHOP, now. Okay. there's an IHOP right across the street from the skinny right guy now. doesn't get it. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. The skinny guy does not get it. But TPS reports, we're back. Pretty quick turnaround here between tournaments this time. But as always, I'm Justin. This is Brandon. And that. Okay. I like it. You look like you're in a dark room. This time. I love flex. it. Yeah, always, always I'm like in the back cave. Room. Yeah, the back cave. I like mm. it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, guys, we had a fun tournament. Non ball for the first time ever at Irish Q on the nine foot tables. This was fun. This was fun. Pat. You were there. You played. What did you think about playing non-ball at Irish? I'm just going to go ahead and jump off with a question right away. What did you think about non-ball there? Yeah? I prefer it. I prefer it over eight ball there. If we do eight ball there, it should be on the seven foot because that was uh, – I didn't expect to have as much fun as I did on a smaller table playing eight ball, but the big table should be nine. I'm glad I mean, you had fun. Yeah. <laughs> I love uh, – I think eight ball is meant to be played on a seven foot table, I think, but – I actually like eight ball better on the big tables up there just because I think the non ball, the tables play a little slower, so it makes it a little harder to move around. So I prefer eight ball on those tables for sure. But it was still a fun tournament. Uh, we paid out 16, a little over $1,600, which is pretty awesome. We had 17 players. We were up against APA Tri Cubs or whatever it's called nowadays. So that takes away a lot of our players. I didn't quite realize how many people play APA, but. Apparently a lot of them. Um, we were once again, though, sponsored by some awesome people. Uh, Deadstroke Media, Pat always sponsoring us. Inkwell Design, JC made an awesome trophy. Had some t-shirts that we got rid of. Uh, we also had John Patera at Remax Metro Realty. He was at the APA Cities or Tri Cup, so he missed out. Paul Harrison Custom Cues once again sponsored us. Uh, Portico Licensed General Contractors, Corey. Uh, he was playing golf, I think, or something. I don't know. I talked to him. Pool Doctors, always appreciate Josh uh, being a sponsor. And Premier Imports of Charlotte, I think Ricky was also at the APA Tri Cup. So there you go. Half those guys play APA. But we definitely appreciate them being sponsors. We can't do it without them. Um, Brandon, you watched from home most of the day as you were not there. Watch from work. Well, either even better, even mm -hmm. better. Um, let's hope your boss. Well, college football was on yeah. and no customers were walking in the door. <laughs> I tuned into the pool series. Thank I love you. it. I love it. I love it. We had we had a good amount of viewers. Uh, Brain. I mean, what's your just overall thoughts on the tournament, man? Just you know, from sitting at home, what did you think? I mean, I I, I love some of the upsets that happened. I love seeing some new faces. Of course, you Justin Edwards get out to attorney finally. Yeah. He's one of yeah. our buddies, so it's nice to see him coming in. Yeah. Um. Overall, good vibe. You know. Everybody seemed to play well. It was on the stream. Every stream match I watched was entertaining. That's what I, yeah, that's what it I'm really saying. was. I mean, just loved every bit of it. Yeah, we actually did not, I don't think, had a bad match on the stream. We had 12 matches on stream, by the way. It's a lot. It's a lot. I didn't count beforehand, so I just now counted. There we go. But 12 matches on the stream. We only paid out top four for this tournament since we had a smaller field. And we're going to go ahead and talk about these guys that cash. All four pretty strong players. 
three of them have been here many, many times. Mm -hmm. We got one newbie, though, that I'll be kind of excited to talk about. But first and foremost, we'll talk about the fourth place finisher, the legend, Eddie Little, who's become a Facebook star with one of his pictures that were taken at the event. This guy always cashes. I think he's now cashed six of our nine events this year. This was points event number seven, but we've had two non-points events, and I think he's cashing six out of nine, if I counted correctly. Um, Pat, you were there, you know, firsthand. You got to watch a lot of Eddie's matches. You even got to play him, which we'll kind of talk about that match later. But what did you think about Eddie's tournament? Did he come up a little short? Did you think maybe he was going to pull this one out? We always ask the question, who would we swap out, you know, in the money and things like that. If I was to predict, I would say that maybe I would have predicted him being third in this field. So maybe by his standard of play, he fell a little bit short, but I don't think he should hang his head low. He had a strong day, strong performance, and he should be proud to, to be in fourth place. Absolutely. I mean, he's always up there. I feel like, like I said, I think he's cashed the most out of anybody on the pool series, uh, whether it was this year or last year. And, you know, he lost his second round of the tournament and battled back through. I mean, he won one, two, three. Pretty much this is Eddie lives in the consistency of the money, yeah. whether it's in the top two or if it's in the seventh, eighth. In this case, it was fourth place. The man is one of the top three or four most consistent cash finishers in our tournament. Uh, definitely took a loss. I didn't expect him to take. But at the same time, he still battled back to get where he got. And, you know, that's what you get out of him. He's going to play good pool, at least most of it. Yeah, I mean, he was uh, subject to maybe – Maybe possibly the biggest upset of the tournament, maybe. I don't know. I don't necessarily call it that, but I did get a text message from a viewer that said, what's up with Eddie losing to Rico? So <laughs> maybe that was a big upset. I don't know. Pat, do you think that's a huge upset, Rico beating Eddie, or is that just a small upset? It's an upset. I don't think it's small. I don't think it's big. I think it's an upset. Really? I think Eddie Little, it should he should beat Rico. But for Rico to beat him, it wouldn't surprise me. If Eddie's not necessarily in stroke at that time and Rico is in stroke, we got, Rico could definitely beat anybody on there uh, uh, during those conditions. So, set. <laughs> yeah, I think it's uh, definitely a testament also to how this uh, format works and how, you know, anybody can really pull off the upset at any given moment. And now we're going to move on to the third place finisher who might also have had the biggest upset of the day. And first time catching in a pool series event, I think it's also only the third time he's played in a pool series event. I do feel like if this guy played more, he would be here more. We'd be talking about him more. Kevin Candido, third place, played for the hot seat and then lost uh, two in a row. I think he kind of just ran out of gas, honestly, mm -hmm. but played really good early in the tournament. And... It was fun to see him up there. Brandon, what do you think about Kevin? I don't know how well you know Kevin, but I know Kevin very yeah, okay. well. I've uh, played him a couple of times. We've, you know, had some good conversations at different rooms that we've uh, hung out at. I'm not going to say, I, I mean, it might be a smid surprise considering a couple of names that were not in the money, but at the same time, no, I'm not that surprised. Kevin has a great game, he has a good feel for it when he gets in rhythm. Um, I think the way he ended up going to the hot seat or in his path to the hot seat was one of the, you know, going to be one of the more talked about stories when we get to the stream matches. But, no, I'm happy for Kevin. Hope he keeps coming out. I know he can definitely do well. So it was cool to see. Yeah, I was super excited. I always enjoy seeing new faces near the top of our uh, of our finishes. Uh, Pat, what do you think about Kevin, man? I think this was probably the first time really that you've seen Kevin play a lot. Definitely. Definitely, I feel like the first time maybe you've seen him play non-ball, but what do you think about Kevin Candido? I think it was the first for both. I like his game, and I think you hit the nail on the head. I think towards the end of the night, it, it seemed like he ran out of gas. Yeah. Uh, matches in the beginning goal. versus the end, yeah. Uh, there was a difference when he made a mistake or missed the ball in the beginning versus the end of the tournament, right? End of the tournament, there was a lot more body language and kind of deflation that you could visibly see from him. Versus the beginning, if you miss a shot, cool, okay, whatever. I'm going to just get back to the table and I get back to the table. So, um, but no, heads off to him, man. To play the way that he did, to beat some of the people that he did. I mean, I, I think he might have had the upset of the tournament. Beating Clay Davis early on. Um, and he got third place, man. What more could you want except for that trophy? <laughs> Everybody wants a trophy. This trophy looked really nice, by the way. 
I liked it a lot. Pat, you saw it. a great job. Yeah, this, mm-hmm. uh, it's like some of them pop out more than others, though, and I feel like maybe this one popped out a little more. I kind of, the green on the, on the name tag kind of stood out a little bit. I liked it a lot. I, I was really wanting it, but obviously I didn't even come close, but it was fun to hand it to the winner. I'll tell you that. Um, let's move on to the second place finisher of this Irish Q nine ball tournament. And I think before the tournament started, he sent out a fax that said, I'm back. That's what happened. He was mm-hmm. kind of like an MJ there. And just like MJ, he comes up a little short when he's back. Cause you know, MJ's first year back, he came up a little short, but it's good to see this guy back in the money. I feel like it's been a while since we've seen him really make a run in the tournament. And that's Clayton Davis with a second place finish. I feel like he's back where he belongs, which is top three in this tournament. He started the year off as definitely the best player on the pool series. And now maybe he's like, hey, don't forget about me, guys. I've kind of fallen behind a little bit, but don't forget me. Pat, you were there all day. We watched Clay multiple times on the stream. You know, he played around the stream table a couple other times. Pat, what do you? How good do you think Clay played? And uh, are you surprised that he finished as high as he did? No, I think Clay is supposed to finish second in this tournament in this field. Uh, we're going to talk about the winner here in a second. But Clay, basically, the really the only problem, you know, taking Big Brother out of there, Big Brother Davis. Uh, really, the only issue he had on tournament was Kevin, and I think that just speaks more to Kevin's play all day than anything. But he's too well with just about everybody else, so. Um, it was good to see Clay playing back to what we would say is his true form. You know, I wouldn't say that he was fully in stroke like we've seen him maybe in the, the first quarter of the TPS year, but it was pretty close. It was pretty close. If you gave him a chance to get out, he was getting out. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty crazy because you mentioned it. He won every match two sets to zero, except for against Kevin and except for against the winner. That's kind of impressive, honestly, to win uh, what? Five matches, two to zero, two sets to zero. That's pretty strong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't care really who you're playing to win, you know, races to three, two out of three sets like that is kind of impressive. Uh, Brandon, you said you were watching that. World. Oh, I did. So uh, what, were you impressed with Clay's playing? Very. And I'm not surprised and never a doubt. I knew he was there and I knew he would come back out and show us what he is again. Um, here's what I want to say about Clay's game for the day. So he's absolutely rolling people. He gets to Kevin. He has a, I'm not going to say a hanger of a nine ball because he was on a rail, but it's a shot that he's an 80% favorite to make, maybe even higher. And he had that momentary lapse of concentration that you're not supposed to have, especially when you're going to put the match away. It was was his hill nine ball. He was going to make it and move on. But no, he misses it, leaves Kevin a dead bank. Yeah. I mean, it was a long bank, but it was a pretty dead bank. He just had to hit it straight, and then Kevin breaks and runs. But then when that happened, Clay Davis turned back into the Superman that we know him to be, and that's why he went all the way to the finals. I'm going to tell you right now, Kevin very well could be maybe the third or fourth best bank player that was in that tournament that we had over the weekend. He made I mean, he made three banks and one rack against Clay the first time that they played. Outside of you and Mike Davis, who would you put up? I think he's a great bank player. Yes, I think that's, you know, us two and then probably Clay. (laughs) Okay, fair enough. Yeah, and then Kevin maybe. Um, (coughs) You know, maybe throw throw Eddie Little in there as well, Mm -hmm. and that's probably your top five for sure. But, yeah, I think, you know, yeah, I mean, I don't want to brag, but, yeah, probably me and Mike would probably be the best two, I feel like. Um, But, yeah, Kevin made three banks on Clay in one rack. It was super impressive. And, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the winner. Let's just go ahead and talk about it. Mr. 3P, that's what I'm going to call him now. They're winning three. TPS tournaments in a row. Mike Davis, Moscone Mike, yeah, three in a row. That's his third, uh, it's his third in a row. He's won, I think, has he won three points events this year now as well? Three out of yeah, four. I'm points. absolutely sick of it. Yeah. Right, yeah. Mike? yeah. <laughs> I think, was it you, Pat? What, was he telling you, Pat, that he has to build new shelves for all these trophies that he's taking on? <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. He came, he stopped by the booth and said that. It was hilarious. I mean, there's the guy started the day off, you know, playing some chump and making it look easy. And then that was me, by the way. And then he just <laughs> steamrolled. He lost one set all day, and that was in the finals to Clay. Mike has really proven that he's definitely, probably, maybe. Definitely the best player that plays in our tournaments, I feel like. But 
also maybe the best player in North Carolina that, you know, people maybe have forgotten about. Mm -hmm. I mean, Pat, do you have any, I mean, just what else is there to say about Mike Davis? All right. For me, man, we set it on the stream. And I think we've all heard this before. You've been sitting at your local pool hall, league night, Friday, Saturday night, whatever it is, you're hanging around your buddies, and you just hear somebody say, man, look how well that person's shooting. They could be a professional. It's like, no, they could not. Right. They're shooting pretty well. I'll give them that. They're probably in a very high game. They're making great shots, getting around the table. It looks good, but no, they can't. This is the closest that we can see to what Moscone Mike used to be. When he gets in his high gear like he did at that back half, especially in the match against Clay, that you can look at and say, oh, that's what professional pool looks like up close and personal front row seats, you know? And then if you talk to, you know, if you ask Mike about it, it's nowhere close to <laughs> where he knows that he could be if, if the situation for him and his health was 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 different, if it was a complete 180, he wouldn't be playing in the pool series. He'd be on WNT, you know, world tour right now, playing with the big dogs, you know, but playing probably for another Moscone Cup spot, you know. That that's that's where I think that his game really could be if and and he's talked about this before, if if everything was a little bit different for him. Um, I can't say enough about the guy, man. He's the, the humblest, nicest pool player I've ever met in my life. And he's an absolute destroyer of worlds. And I love watching every second of him play. It's the best. That, which we'll get in more into detail. But yeah, the first probably set and a half of the finals was probably as close to vintage Mike Davis as we have seen. And you're right, though. On the pro level, I mean, I hate to say it, but Honestly, Mike's pretty far down compared to a lot of those top dogs. And that really does show you what the difference is between the guys that are getting second, third, and fourth in this tournament and the guys that are at the top of the world that we watch, you know, on actual television, the guys that we, you know, sit here and buy the jerseys and all sorts of stuff. Um, Brandon, what do you guys say? Yeah, yeah. Brandon, what do you guys say? I mean, we talk about Mike every tournament. I mean, is there anything? I mean, a couple of things. Number one, there's no way I can follow up how great of a response Pat just laid down. Oh, it was there. perfect. I mean, that's just covered it all. Number two, Mike, you're making our jobs harder because we can only say so many things over and over and over again. But that's where we always find ourselves at this exact point three times in a row. There's a little bit of a difference here. You really had to turn back into Moscone Cup, uh, Moscone Cup Mike. You really did, and that was fun to watch. One of those I really wish I'd have been there in person. But uh, we'll definitely talk about. I mean, soon. but that that was so much fun to see the lion come out of you. Absolutely, Pat. I wanted to add one more thing. I hope that he continues to come, and he continues to win until someone beats him. I don't. I hope it's never a situation which he doesn't seem like that kind of guy. Maybe, but you know, he's 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 nice. I hope he doesn't look at this and say, "Hey, you know what? I'm going to take a step back and not play in the next one because I want to give somebody else a chance." Please don't do that. Please keep showing up. Please keep trying your best. Please give it your all. Please keep winning. Make someone beat you. I think that's what the people want to see. That's what I want to do. <laughs> it ain't going to happen, but I think I I just want to put that out there. Please keep showing up, Mike. We love having you, man. You definitely don't have to worry about that with him because, you know, this is his job and people, when they do their job, they're not like, oh, let me pass this up to somebody else. So we definitely don't have to worry about that. If he doesn't come, it's maybe because there's something else going on or maybe he just can't attend. But yeah, I mean, I, I want to see somebody, I want to see somebody step up and become his rival. I want there to be like a, you know, a Chiefs Bengals type rivalry, you mm -hmm. know, towards the end of the tournaments. I mean. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it would be a lot of fun, I think, maybe if him and Clay start playing, you know, every time at the end, or, you know, Mike and Renal, or we've yeah. seen Mike and Hunter a few times now. But, yeah, Mike has played in four points events this year, four out of seven. These are his finishes. First place, third place, first place, first place. It's pretty good. Yeah. What happened with that third place? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. The third place was the only event I mean, that come you know, on. That's it's the only event that we played on seven foot tables. So maybe we found his kryptonite. Maybe we just gotta do more bar table tournaments. <laughs> don't worry, Mike. Bar box in one sure. pocket. Don't, don't worry, that's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. No, no bar table events. I hopefully we don't do any more. Um 
So that's our top four finishers, man. Congratulations, Mike Davis, Clay Davis, Kevin Candido, Eddie Little. Super strong top four. Congrats to you guys. Here's three guys that I want to mention, you know, a little a little mention here of three guys that did not cash that I feel like deserve to be talked about. And that's uh, first and foremost, I'm going to say Rico Gonzalez getting fifth, sixth. Mm -hmm. Another strong finish for Rico. He plays really good at Irish Q. He says he doesn't like it, but I feel like he likes it. He's always getting close to, you know, the money or in the money at Irish Q. Also, Jeff Abernathy finishing seventh, eighth. The guy, he's always up there as well. Kind of surprised me that he didn't maybe quite get to the money. And then thirdly, I'm just going to mention Jimmy Tanner. Yes. He doesn't come out very often, but when he does, he usually plays very strong. And for him to finish seventh and eighth is no surprise. I'm actually surprised he finished that low. And uh, hats off to him as well. He's doing a great job running the uh, APA down there. And uh, I don't even know, don't know what his I'm APA is called. Sure. But he runs like the South Carolina, North Carolina border APA, uh, Gastonia, like Spartanburg maybe area. Um, so good job, Jimmy. Big fan of him. Um, so those are three guys I just wanted to mention really quick. Uh, Pat, do you want to mention anybody else, or what do you think about those three guys, you know, playing in the tournament? Super great. I think that Jeff is probably one that I thought would have finished a little bit higher, given the field and how well he was playing. Um, I want to shout out Justin Edwards mm. for coming out to a tournament. Bro, come back out, please. Please come back. Uh, I think he actually might be planning on trying to get to the smoking Q1 in October. Yeah, he's he uh, so he hasn't already, yeah. He's on about fantastic. I know he had a he had a good time. So thank you so much. Also, Ralph Wallace, thanks for coming back. I think yes. for your second one, man, you won a match. I don't know yes. if this is your first win or not. I can't remember, but uh, shout out to him as well, man. Those are definitely the two guys I wanted to shout out. Yeah, I was glad that Ralph came to play again, and obviously super glad that Justin came and played. He kind of had a tough draw going to and out, but it was exciting to see Justin Edwards finally come and play because he's a guy that doesn't really get talked about enough. He's one of those guys that you know could be dominant in league, but I think he gets kind of bored playing some of the league players. And I think a tournament like this can really help him out. Uh, Brandon, is there anybody else that you want to mention or what do you think about the guys no, that I mentioned? No, you pretty much nailed the exact three. I'm going to say, Rico, every time you go to Irish, you, you pull off an upset. Yeah. You know, sometimes people call them upsets. I say the other player was favored. You know what I mean? But favored players still lose. Yeah. So he got Jeff Abernathy a couple of times, and now he can add Eddie Little to his list. So that's a strong showing from Rico. I think Rico might be one of the biggest fans of our format. <laughs> oh, I bet. <laughs> yeah. It caters right to him. Yeah. And exactly. Justin Edwards definitely being a friend of mine, seeing him get out to a tournament. He's one of those sneaky good players. He can sneak up on you and all of a sudden apply pressure and make you think about what you're doing. So hope he plays in many more, like Pat said, and just keep bringing it. Absolutely. Let's uh, let's move on to how the TPS guys did mm -hmm. in the tournament. Uh, only only two out of three of us played because again, Brandon has to work. I didn't miss a shot from my phone. Yes, good job. Thank That's you. impressive. Thank you. Um, we'll just start off with me this time because we always start at the bottom and work our way up. So we'll start off with uh, Justin Clark's turn of this time, finishing ninth through twelfth. Um, second round matchup because first round there was only one match, which we'll get to, but. Second round matchup, I lose to Mike Davis two to zero. Then I beat Justin Edwards two to zero. Mm -hmm. This is sets, by the way, not games. So two sets to zero. And then I lose to Clay Davis two sets to zero. Uh, we'll just start with you, Brandon. What do you think about uh, Justin's tournament? Um, as chalky as you can get. You lost the ones you're supposed to lose, and you won the one you're supposed to win. Yeah. Not a lot to talk about. I mean, every win and loss there is 100% par. Yeah. So. Okay. Agreed, agreed. Pat, what do you think? You obviously saw my match life up close. <laughs> Same thing. Brandon hit the nail on the head. You lost the ones I guess you were supposed to. You won the one that you should have. Um, anytime you play Clay, Renal, somebody like that, if it goes too well, you don't really, you know, not not that I'm, I'm not like surprised, but I always think you, that you'll always get, that you can get a set on anybody. So I, I, never, I guess the question I have was like, I'm never going to rule them out. Right. Exactly. Never going to rule them out. Um, you always do a great job of putting yourself in position to be there at the end. So I guess what do you think was like the big thing that happened with Clay? Was he just shooting very well and you weren't or some roles? Uh, yeah, he had a couple of breaking runs. That definitely helped him. 
a lot. Yeah, I just uh, I don't really I don't think I move the cue ball as much on those tables. The rails aren't as fast. You know, the tables don't play as fast, and it just comes down to to shot making. And you know, I just missed a couple balls against. I missed a couple balls against Clay, and I missed a couple balls against Mike. That I feel like if I do make, then I think I get a set on each of them, and then all of a sudden, you know, anything happened in the third set. So I definitely feel like that's what happened. And again, I shout out to Justin though. Justin actually took me hill hill both sets. Uh, I won two zero two sets zero, but both of them were hill hill. And honestly, I think uh, the first set he was shooting at the non ball to win. I think or it might have been the eight ball. I can't remember now, but. He definitely missed either the eight ball or a nine ball to win um, the first set. So shout out to Justin for definitely playing, playing a lot better than I expected. I mean, I know he's a really good player. You know, like I said, I think he's possibly one of the best APA nine ball players in the Charlotte area now. But for him to do as well in this tournament, I think shows that he's got skills that nobody knows about. Um, mm-hmm. And that's enough about my tournament. Let's move on to Pat's tournament. Pat was the lucky guy that got to play first round. Nobody else got to play first round. So congrats on that, Pat. You were the lucky winner. Uh, also finished ninth through 12th. And here's how your tournament went. You lost to Jeff Abernathy two sets to zero. That was the first round. Then you beat Joey Lowe two sets to zero, beat James Jenkins two sets to one, and lose to Eddie Little two to zero. We'll start with Brandon. Brandon, what do you think about Pat's uh, four matches there? I think that, you know, when you play players like Jeff, when you end up going into the loser's bracket, you have a tendency of coming out playing strong because, I mean, you've already faced one of the Lions. Now you get to deal with a little bit more manageable task, and it brings you confidence. So I'm actually not surprised. I'm on both of your wins. And, you know, losing to Eddie after he owed you, that's definitely not a, you know, not a bad thing at all. So, you know, shout out to Pat. That's a good tourney, Pat. Two good wins there. Yeah, I think, especially with your back against the wall, makes a difference. Yeah, to win, um, well, to draw Jeff first is a tough draw, absolutely. And then, honestly, if Joey Lowe's in stroke, you know, that's probably a toss-up match. And then James Jenkins, I mean, I'm giving you the edge there on that one, Pat, just because you play more tournaments than he does. Uh, league-wise, maybe, you know, it's a different story, but. Tournament-wise, I'd definitely favor you. But to win both those matches back-to-back on loser side, I think it's really strong because mm-hmm. I don't think you're super favored in either one. So to win two matches like that on, on the loser side so early in the tournament, too, I think is really strong. And then, I mean, you lose it to legend, Eddie Little. I mean, that's nothing wrong with that at all. I mean, y'all have played each other before. You've actually beaten them before at Irish i I'm shout-out to that, yeah. <laughs> so – I think your tournament, you know, I think if anything, you should be happy with how the tournament went, honestly, because you very easily could have lost, I think, to Joey or James and been out a little sooner. So if it's me, I think you should be happy with it. But what's your thoughts, Pat? I don't care what you think I should feel like. So how about that? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no uh, you guys are exactly right. I'm I'm ecstatic with how I played during the tournament. Um, with Jeff, that first set, we actually went to the hill. Um, I had a chance. I think I, I think I might have missed a nine ball, uh, tough nine. I can't remember now, but had a chance to get a, a set on him, and then he just closed it out in that second set. Uh, in my opinion, against Joey and James, um, no offense to those guys, really good players. I I personally think I'm supposed to beat both of them. Um, so, like you guys said, it was definitely on my mind to that I was going on the brink of elimination if I did lose either one of these matches. And there were close matches, especially once uh, the one against James because we went to the hill. But I personally think that I would favor myself over those two guys. Um, so I feel like my game right now is at a point to where hopefully I'm now winning matches that I should be winning and I need to be putting myself in a position to win matches that maybe I'm the major underdog or just an underdog yet as well, like against your Jeff Abernathy's and your Eddie Littles. And with Eddie, I got up on him quick in the first set, 2-0, um, and then he came back, and I don't think I wanted him right there. So it's, it's one of those things that's like when I'm playing against guys that it's a lot closer, uh, I feel like I'm doing a better job of closing and winning those matches. And when it comes to those Lions, like Brandon mentioned, I need to do a better job of putting myself in a position to be there at the end, you know, taking them, taking the long game, trying to make it go three sets if possible, but just put myself, give myself a chance. But overall, I had a 
great time. I love my tournament. I was not mad when I lost to Eddie, sort of, kind of. Uh, we split, and we're going to run it back again, and I can't wait. Nice. Yeah, I mean, um, sadly, with as strong as these tournaments are, you almost have to pull off an upset to get to the money. Not just you, but probably 25 players in this tournament have to pull off some kind of Absolutely. upset to be uh, to be in the money. So it, it's tough, man. It's very tough to get normally to the top eight or whatever we're paying out. It's tough with these fields. And let's move on. Let's talk about our stream matches a little bit. Like I said, we had 12 matches on the stream, <laughs> uh, which is a good number. I mean, it's, it's a fun day of watching a lot of pool series, a lot of pool. Um, so let's start off with the second round matchups as we did not live stream the first round. Sorry, Pat. Apologize to you as you were the only first round. Uh, but we did we did do two second round matchups. We had Mike Davis beating Justin Clark two to zero. And then we had Rico Gonzalez beating Dave Eshelman two sets to zero. Um, me personally, um, I don't think either uh, – Either match was all that exciting. I think they were both, and I think they both also went the way that they should have. I think, um, you know, it. The best player won both matchups. I think, Pat. What do you think? You were there. I think you commentated both matchups. I think maybe. About the same. Um, they were fun for me because I just like watching stylistic matchups. So anytime you get a chance to see Mike Davis play, it's going to be. Uh, engaging but then when I watch him play somebody like you you guys have completely different strokes I think completely different approaches to the game as well it's always fun to kind of figure out which way each of you guys thinks it when you approach the table so I wouldn't say that they, they were necessarily boring or not so much not, not so fun to watch I think if you're I think if you're a student of the game you can watch just about anything and get some enjoyment out of it so I enjoy them but I agree with you that they both went the way that they were supposed to go yeah. Um, shout out to Dave, though, for coming to play. That's the first time we've seen him this year. So thanks for him for coming to play. I know he didn't quite do as good as he wanted, but uh, it was good to see him back uh, back in the pool series. Uh, Brandon, what do you think about the uh, two second round matchups? Um, I call most of both of them. Uh, as far as the match with Rico and Dave, I, it is good to see Dave come. I hadn't seen him in a while. Rico's absolutely favored and he went yeah. ahead and got through yeah. it. So, I mean, not really a lot to talk about there. Rico came out strong the whole day and pretty much stayed it until, you know, he ran into his bus all at the end. Yeah. But um, I think you drew the one guy that every single person in the room would pick against you. <laughs> because, like I said, you're not some random Joe Schmo, and people need to remember that. So, um, but, yeah, no, Mike was playing like professional Mike Davis and just – when he saw out, he got out. I mean, See, I actually, I actually feel like he made a few mistakes in that match, but the problem was I made a few mistakes yeah. also. So Early in the day, it's on the yeah. stream. You know, get the nerves out, get the jitters out. Oh, yeah. You could tell he was nervous, too. No, I'm just kidding. But, but, one, but once he settled in, <laughs> you know, it was a typical Mike Davis story. That's yeah. what we should just call it, the typical Mike Davis story. Yeah. We'll just start calling it the Mike Davis Report. Yes, so we the Mike Davis Report. <laughs> Uh, let's move on to the third round. Third round, we also had two matchups, and um, I feel like these matchups were actually pretty entertaining. These matchups were pretty close as well. You had Kevin pulling off the upset, beating Kevin Candido, pulling off the upset, beating Clay Davis two sets to one. And then you had Dan Mooney beating Ralph Wallace two sets to zero. It was good to see Dan and Ralph play on the stream first time for both of them. It's good when we get different people on there, maybe lesser known players. Mm -hmm. You know, I think they both played pretty well also. I think they both made a couple of mistakes, but it was good to see both of them on the stream. And then obviously Kevin pulling off a huge upset against Clay. Um, I mean, I think both these matchups in their own way were fun to watch. And I definitely think people should get to know Dan as he's been playing a lot of our tournaments and hopefully Ralph starts to play in a lot. Pat, what do you think about the third round? That's great. I wanted to uh... – also, shout out Dan Mooney. I can't believe I left him out of my shout out. Shout out to Dan, man. Dan is a huge supporter of the pool series. Really? I mean, the guy is playing and he's listening to us broadcast the TV table at the same time. And he's giving feedback like, hey, man, that audio is kind of like, I'm, bro, Dan's awesome. Shout out to you, Dan. He had a great tournament, man. He finished fifth six, yeah. you know? Um, but yeah, shout out to Ralph as well for coming in. <laughs> I, hope, I hope he keeps coming back. Um, yeah. But yeah. Great. I think I think it was a great third round. I think they went uh, the way that they were supposed to go, except for the upset of the day, I think, in Kevin versus versus Clay Davis. I did not expect that. 
for me, early Clay Davis is a very, very strong Clay Davis. And we always talk about this, the better players get better as the night goes on. He is definitely one of those guys. So for Kevin to come in early on, third round, and pull off that upset really spoke to his trajectory for the rest of the tournament. Agreed, absolutely. And uh, Pat, I think you played on Ralph's APA team for a while or one of his teams. What's he, what's he ranked as? Do you know? Pool Hall Junkies, baby. Yeah, there you go. He's the champs can't touch us. Uh, he is ranked. He's mainly ranked like a, he falls between a six and a seven. Okay. In eight ball. Uh, nine ball, he might be a five or six in nine ball APA. Okay, I think so. I, I definitely feel like these tournaments will help him out a lot playing uh, better. You know, you're playing better competition every round. You know, me and him even had the conversation earlier where I think he was saying in league, like maybe last week or whatever, he played like a low rank. And I'm like, yeah, that gets kind of kind of boring. You know, I mean, you want to play good competition every match. So, you know, I think Ralph can get a lot better by playing in these tournaments. So hopefully he keeps coming out. Uh, Brandon, what do you think about those? Third round matchups. The Kevin and the Kevin and Clay match is definitely an upset. Even for as good as I know Kevin can play, that's a huge upset. But I think how it happened as well is the biggest thing. Because uh Clay honestly had that three to one. Yeah. He had that three to one. It wasn't that hard of a non ball. It was missable, but I mean I guess any shot's missable if you don't focus. And then, you know, Kevin made him pay the price. He 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 had a perfect breaking run. Mm-hmm. Right after that, that's how you close out. Let people know you're here. Yeah. So big shout out to Kevin on that. So that was an awesome match to watch. I definitely caught the end of it and couldn't believe it. But you know, happy for Kevin. And that's honestly the way that it happened was what made it so entertaining. I think if Kevin just kind of wins, you know, without excitement at the end, I maybe mm-hmm. maybe we don't talk about that match as much because you know we see upsets. You know, every pretty much every tournament, I feel like we have a couple upsets, but sometimes not as exciting. Like this is definitely one of the most exciting upsets that we have seen. And what makes it even better, also, is that they play later on. And what makes it even better is that Clay makes it to the finals. That also adds to the to the uh, story of the upset. Absolutely. You know, it's not always just about what happens in that match; it's about what happens afterwards as well. Uh, Let's move on now. We got the final four winner side. Obviously, we have both matchups here. You got Mike Davis beating Rico Gonzalez, two sets to zero. And then what I'm calling maybe the most surprising final four matchup in pool series history, Kevin Candido and Dan Mooney with Kevin pulling out the 2-1 win. I think Mike beating Rico. Rico, I felt like maybe he had a chance early on, but it slipped away pretty quickly. And then Kevin and Dan actually was a pretty surprising match. I think they both made some mistakes. They both played really well. You can tell they're very familiar with each other's games. I think they maybe play on the same APA team. Uh, I know Dan will correct me if I'm wrong about that. So there's that. But that was actually a very fun match. Kevin and Dan was actually probably the better match to watch. Honestly, I'm just going to go ahead and throw that out there. Uh, Brandon, did you get to watch these matchups? Have you seen them? I watched, I watched the majority of the Kevin and Dan match. Um, yeah, I actually talked to Kevin about that afterwards as we were messaging throughout the day. And he said that he did not feel like he did not deserve to win that match against Dan, that it just definitely, you know, was nothing like his match against Clay. And I said, you know, pretty much, you know, the emotional letdown from a huge win can linger in the next match. And I think that's what happened. But at the end of the day, he still found out a way to pull out the wins. So that's what counts. Yeah, that's the key. So it's still big time. Yeah, because that's, that's the huge part is still pulling out the win after – you beat a great player like Clay, and then mm-hmm. no offense to Dan, but then you're playing somebody who's a little lower on the totem pole. That can be tough sometimes. Uh, Pat, what do you think about those two matchups? No, you guys are exactly right. That's always is it, I think it's happened to all of us. You know, you come off of that big, super high emotional win, and you get to the next match, and you just don't remember how to play pool. You know, you end up losing a match that you you probably shouldn't have. So, again, shout out to Kevin for, you know, keeping his composure, doing what he needed to do to close out and get into a position to, uh, you know, to possibly win the whole thing, possibly win the whole tournament. Uh, there's just a juggernaut on the other side of things keeping you from doing that. So, <laughs> uh, and Justin, you brought up a good point, man. Definitely that was a better match to watch. There was more drama. It goes to the hill. you got players who... Um, are not necessarily close together, but they're a lot closer than what Rico and 
Mike would be. So it's going to make for a more entertaining match. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I mean, Dan and Kevin only have about 70 point difference on the Fargo scale, whereas Rico is about 200 points below Mike. <laughs> it's crazy. Kevin's, Kevin's like, what? Kevin's like 563, 565? Yeah, 567. He was, bro, he was playing close to like, like low mid 600s that day, I think, man. He was playing really, really well. Yeah, which is probably where he should be at. He should probably be above 600 for sure. I don't think he's a, but I also mm -hmm. think on the flip side, I think Rico is a lot better than a 552 also. Mm -hmm. I'm in that same class with him. I know how they feel. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of like seems to be the spot where a lot of players are that, uh, can sometimes play way better than that and then sometimes go to and out. That seems to be like that's where that Fargo yeah. kind of stands. Uh, let's move on here with our stream matches. We go to the seventh, one of the seventh, eighth place matches. We have Eddie Little, Jeff Abernathy. Eddie went in two sets to zero. I feel like this was a kind of a big surprise here. Not so much that Eddie won, but that it was two sets to zero. I really thought that this would be, I really thought that this match would be a lot better. It kind of, you know, maybe sometimes you hype up a match in your mind a little bit, and then it just doesn't live up to it. And that's kind of what happened in this match. But it was still fun to watch. I rewatched it. It was definitely uh, worth checking out. But Eddie pulls out the two set to zero win. Um, Pat, what do you think about the legend versus Abernathy? I just want to say to Jeff, I apologize for giving you so much false confidence during our first match when you woke me. <laughs> and to Eddie, you're welcome for getting you in stroke right before you went to go play your boy. Okay. <laughs> no, but um, no, another great point, Justin. So when you see two guys like this that are so closely matched uh, in skill level, you would expect this to be Hill Hill, Barn Burner, mm -hmm. almost a finals-esque type of match that you're going to watch. But Jeff was making a lot of mistakes that you normally wouldn't see him make. You know, he was making a lot of mistakes. Um, defenses leaking out, missed shots, poor positioning. I don't know if it was fatigue that was setting in at that point of the night or what it was, but there was just mistakes nonetheless. And Eddie, Eddie was making a few mistakes, but not nearly as many as Jeff. And he was also much more in stroke, getting around the table very nicely, making key balls, making shots, closing out racks. Yeah, they definitely both made mistakes, I didn't think. And Eddie just capitalized on Jeff's mistakes, honestly. When Eddie would make a mistake, Jeff, it kind of seemed like just wouldn't really capitalize and would make another mistake. Whereas anytime Jeff made a mistake, pretty much the rack was over. Um, Brandon, what do you think? I mean, I'm definitely not going to call this an upset, but I'm pretty much going to favor Jeff every time they play. Wow. So for Eddie to get, I mean, slightly favored, like a 51-49 kind of thing. But um, for the record, Eddie's five points higher on the Fargo scale. It's okay. Fargo doesn't mean anything. I Jeff's got the that. lucky number of six 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 right now. Well, either way, Far Fargo's one thing. You know, things things are weird. But I saw a particular player near seven hundred get drilled out of plenty of money by six fifteen. So I do know that can happen. But either way, that's just an opinion. Um. Ready to win in straight sets is what got me. Yeah, I, th yeah. This is a type of match I pretty much almost can guarantee, you know, eight out of ten sets is going to go three sets. But, you know, you're exactly right. I mean, Ed, Jeff made too many mistakes. And, you know, when Jeff leaked out, Eddie was dead. When Eddie missed, Jeff had to work a little harder. Mm -hmm. That can really swing a match sometimes, big time. Confidence, you know, how you're stroking the ball, how motivated you are. Those things can happen. I think that's what happened here. Yeah, I think it was um, definitely not their best showing. I'd like to see these two guys play again where they both play closer to perfect or perfect. I think that would be super exciting to see, especially in this format. Um, let's move on to a fifth, sixth place matchup. We had one of the fifth, sixth place matchups on the stream. It was Clay Davis beating Rico Gonzalez two sets to zero. And all I got to say is I really – I want to ask Rico, but I really think maybe he just wants to beat Clay so bad that it just messes up his game a little bit because this is twice now that we have seen them on the stream. Both times I feel like Rico has probably almost played better but still loses the match just because of unforced errors, and then Clay capitalizes on them and gets out, builds momentum, and then finishes it out strong. But this was a fun match to watch. Was a lot of fun to watch. Maybe it was because you kept thinking, oh, Rico might 
be able to pull this out. Rico might be able to win the set. And then Clay was like, no, it's not happening. Brandon, what do you think about Clay beating Rico 2-0? to zero? I know that feeling that you're talking about. Yeah. Because, I mean, that can definitely happen when you – when you know you've beaten a guy before, but yet you still want to beat him so bad that you forget how to actually play the game yourself, you're <laughs> focused on beating him, not on shooting the shot. That That's exactly what that is. But, uh, but no, I mean, I'm not going to take anything away from Clay. Clay did what he was supposed to do when it was time. And, you know, sometimes, like, I ran into juggernaut Clay. That's a hard, that's a hard player to play against. And when you know you can't make a mistake on him, that's, you know, when he'll absolutely make you pay. So um not really surprised at the result here. The the right player moved on. Same, same. Definitely the better player won. No offense, Rico. Pat, what do you think about Clay and Rico's match? Yeah, same thing. I know they're feeling all too well. Just take out Clay Davis and put in uh David Anderson's name. <laughs> Except I've never gotten close to touching that guy. <laughs> but it's but it's true. It's like it's like when you when you that person, you know, the whole phrase lives in your mind rent free. Right, you get so focused on wanting to beat them, just like Brandon said, that you're not focused on getting the uh, making the right shot, making the right play, and then you end up making mistakes. And I really truly believe that that's what's happening to Rico. He was making a lot more mistakes during that match than I've seen him make in any other match that he was playing in all day, including the one against Mike Davis. I feel like he made more mistakes against Clay than he did against Mike. Um, so yeah, right player definitely moves on, and I think that's a big reason as to why you can see it. You can see it on Rico. He didn't look comfortable. He looked very uh, disheveled. Um, like he was trying to work out what was going on internally. Like there was a tornado on the inside. If you could see it on the outside, and usually when you see that, it's never going to favor the player that that's going on with. So um, we'll find out this weekend what happened with Rico when we see him again. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk to him. Yeah, he definitely didn't look comfortable. You're right about that. Um, the next match that we had up after that though was the hot seat match, and on paper. Maybe everybody thinks that Mike kind of runs away with it, and he kind of did. Mike Davis beats Kevin Candido two sets to zero. I will say this, though. I think Kevin was up two to one the first set, and then Mike realized, hey, it's time to start playing. This is the hot seat match. And after that, Kevin really just never had a chance. Mike, you know, shows why we call him Moscone Mike. You don't get a nickname like that by losing the hot seat match. Pat, give us your thoughts on the hot seat. Oh, on God's green earth is going to stop that man in a hot seat match. Okay. <laughs> That's what I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't seen him yet. Okay. Um, but no, I think, no, you're exactly right. Uh, Mike goes down 2 1. I think he, uh, you know, just kind of does what he needs to do to relax a little bit, relax his body more specifically a little bit. So he's uh, kind of a little bit more control and he, his mental is on the game and not on his physical. Uh, and then from there, his freight train Mike. I'm all punching my ticket to the finals. That's it. Great train, Mike. I like it. Uh, Brandon, give us give us what you're thinking about the hot seat match. When Kevin was up two to one, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, this dream's about to come true, or <laughs> Mike go to work, and that's exactly what he did. He went to his job and ended up doing his job quite well, which he has done for numerous years. And takes down the hot seat. You know, no shocker here. I'm not shocked that Kevin would, you know, be really motivated because he's there. It's house money. Not a soul in the room actually expects you to win. So you can always come out kind of guns a blazing right then. Yeah. But then you can also cool off real fast when you see a big time player start making big time shots. And that's what started to happen. I think it's, you know, when we got a player such as Mike playing against a player such as Kevin, and there's such a difference in their uh, skill level. Not to say Kevin's a bad player, because Kevin is a really good player. But when Kevin was up two to one, there was zero thought in my mind that Kevin was going to win that match. I actually wasn't even sure that he was going to win the set. And that just tells you more so what I think about Mike Davis and the fact that I had no worries about him you know, stepping it up and making sure that he won that match. Because, you know, any other people that we've had on the stream, you know, if somebody's up two to one, I'm probably thinking the guy two to one is going to win that set, except for this match. And that's just because Mike Davis is that good. Um, Let's move on to the fourth place matchup now. We get the fourth place matchup. We're in the money now. So the money. So all these people are finishing in the money from here. 
Eddie Little losing to Clay Davis two sets to zero. These two guys have played on the stream a lot. These two guys have played in the tournament a lot. This match was definitely entertaining. Um, Eddie, you could tell, did not want to lose this match. Also, I feel like Clay at this point was probably playing almost his best, I feel like, at this point. Like, I think maybe mm -hmm. this could have been Clay's best match. Um, Pat, what do you think Eddie and Clay playing on the stream once again, this time for fourth place? Definitely. I think this is the part where maybe Eddie starts to run out of gas a little bit, making a few more mistakes, and Clay is getting into his struggle. Confidence is high. He's playing the best that he's played all night. Just like you said, he's making very minimal mistakes and he's punishing very well. I think the frustration that I've talked about with Rico versus uh, Clay Davis, this is where I started to see a little bit of that from Eddie because he wasn't playing as well as he did. Uh, like he played against myself and um, towards the second set and then on, and then how he carried that over to playing Jeff Abernathy. That same Eddie Little in those two matches wasn't really there in the match versus Clay, and it was frustrating. You could see that, you could tell, at least for me, he was he was trying to get back to that. He was trying to find it, but Clay wasn't having it. Um, with all respects to Eddie, uh, Clay was just in his high gear at that point, playing his best pool. And um, I, think in, I think between those two, I favor Clay. Probably, I would probably say it's like a 55-45 for me on that one. I'm going to favor Clay more often than not against Eddie, but I'm never going to count Eddie out of anything. Clay does have a six-point advantage on the Fargo scale. So you can't throw that out there. Um, Brandon, <laughs> Brandon, what you thinking about Eddie and Clay? Pat talked about one of the biggest things I love about Clay, where a lot of players are getting weaker. His confidence, his, his stroke is getting better. He gets stronger. And, you know, when he develops confidence, he is a freight train, like, you don't know what you're going to get out of it, but you know it's going to be good. Mm -hmm. And he starts, you know, pulling shots from everywhere, which I've seen him do 100-plus times. Um, not surprised. I mean, I, I think the better player won. And, you know, also, Clay has a very, you know, long memory. He, he remembers who he loses to. I know he wanted to play the next match. <laughs> I know he wanted to right that wrong. Just knowing what type of prideful player he is, and that's what he knew. Okay, I'm just going to take care of Eddie now so I can get to this next match and get to the one where I really belong. And that's what he did. Yeah, I think Clay had a little uh, – I think Clay had a little more want in that match for sure, and I think that's what it came down to. And that leads us to the third-place match where Ke uh, Clay does get his second shot at Kevin Candido. Clay Davis, Ke Kevin Candido. Clay beats him two sets to one this time. and. This goes back to what I said during Kevin's match with Mike. This time, Kevin's up, and I'm thinking he's going to actually win the set. And mm -hmm. sadly, Clay wins. But, boy, this match, this match could have been, at the time, this match was probably the best one on the stream. When this match ended, mm -hmm. I feel like maybe this was the best match on the stream. And you got to feel bad for Kevin. I think maybe he just ran out of gas a little bit. But, mm -hmm. man, it would have been cool to see him in the finals. But Clay, definitely the better player. Pulls out the W. Uh, Brandon, what what do you think uh, about Clay and Kevin round two? It did not go the way I expected. I expected a run over. Oh, wow. No, I, I expected Clay to actually come out. I did not. I, I would have bet you almost anything that it would not have gone three sets. But that just shows, you know, to what type of credit I give Kevin on that. Even as tired as he was, you know, ready to mail it in and go home to the missus. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, I think also once Clay lost that first set, he really proved it in the second and third set. He he was he just was not going to lose. He he ended up playing that type of pool in the second and third set. He definitely slow started, which I did not expect out of him. But he picked it up in the second and third. And a tired Kevin started missing really basic shots. And obviously, you can't do that with, you know, you can't do that with a lot of players, especially Clay. So that's where we ended up. For sure, for sure. Pat, you were there front and center. Tell us. I always got the best seat in the house because I'm always <laughs> in that seat first. Eliminated. But um, no, Brandon, I, I think you hit the nail on the head, man. It was a tale of 
the better player possibly coming in wanting to right that wrong. And so mm-hmm. maybe playing a little bit, a little bit careful, a little, a little bit tight early on, trying to play perfectly, ends up losing a set against somebody who is like like they've been running at 180 miles an hour now. That tank is just about to run out of gas, right? They're gonna go ahead and take that first set. And so now that lets you say, hey, you know what? Whatever. If I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go out on my shield. He kind of opens up a little bit, loosens up a little bit, confidence is a little bit higher. I think mentally he just switches and said, you know, I'm just gonna play. Whatever happens, happens. I know I'm good. I know what I can do. And he takes the next couple of sets. Um, I think the the two biggest things, to your point, the better player definitely won and he was supposed to. I also thought it was going to go 2-0. Usually when you see Clay come back and he's playing somebody again later on in the evening that uh, beat him earlier on, he's mm-hmm. on a mission. And it's going to be 2-0. Um, at the same time, you could see physically from Kevin if it was a missed shot, uh, a poor defense, a bad lead. Just physically, it was just exhaustion and just, you know, downtrodden uh, kind of mood. Um, but all in all, man, you, you all of that, you still get third. My God, what a great night for you, man. What a great tournament. So shouts yeah. out to him. Fun match to watch, too. Really fun match to watch. It was it was it was nice to kind of watch that momentum swing after the first set, you know. Absolutely, it was a super fun match, and hats off to Kevin for a great third place finish. Now we move on to the finals. This is where men become men. It's a race to four, best two out of three sets. So a little bit longer of a match, uh, just one match does not need to be double dipped. Mike Davis pulls out the win on Clay Davis in what I think was the most exciting match of the day, possibly the best finals matchup we have had in the pool series event, maybe. I think it was definitely up there. And yeah, the first set and a half, Mike Davis played probably a 99 out of 100. And then the final rack was probably one of the most interesting final racks I think we have seen. Um, I guess we'll start off with Pat, since you were there, uh, Pat. Just go ahead and talk about it, man. The most gut-wrenching match I have ever seen in person. The most gut-wrenching thing. Uh, the defining moment of that match for me. I don't know if I should say defining. I would say what the, the uh, something that really, really sticks out is there was a moment when Clay was fighting with all of his heart to make sure that this thing went to the hill. And he ends up getting it there and he's hyped on the sideline like he's looking at me i'm kind of like trying not to look at him on the microphone but we make our contact and he's like yeah let's go he's like if i win this i'm ripping my shirt da, 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 da. i'm gonna take and i think the reason why he couldn't close out that that last set was he was so focused on the result mm. that the 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 shots in front of him wasn't getting 100 of clay's focus 100 of clay's attention there was a part of his brain that was still on i'm up 3-0 against mike freaking davis on the third set i'm about to 4-0 this man and win this championship or all i need is one more and i'll pull off the biggest upset i think there was a piece of him that was still on that just because of the interaction i was able to have with him on the sideline also talking to mike after the fact uh his physical was taking a deep dive into that third set uh he was making a lot of mistakes he was he was he was two different mics from the second set and uh starting off in that third set for those first three racks he was making a lot of mistakes missing shots and it was like oh my god clay is really about to do this and then you saw that freight train mic came right back around i think he he took a sip of beer a couple sips of beer and then that was it and then to sit there and watch what that man did to come back the way that he did and to see Clay's face the whole time, I felt so, it was like, I don't know, it was like yin and yang. I felt so sick for one guy and I was so elated for another to watch like the comeback happen. Greatest match that we've ever had of the pool series. The number one match that we've ever had, bar none. It was definitely exciting. Brain, I know you've been ready to talk about this uh, pretty much all week. So go ahead. And I think it. it's just how I think it's how I found out about what happened was unbelievable. So, so I made it through the first two sets because it was you guys gonna have to help me out. It was late. It was like 12 o'clock. That was late for me. Come on now. <laughs> I was tired. We were, we were at Waffle House by like 115. Whatever reason, I couldn't <laughs> stay awake. So I said, all right, I'm going to watch the 
watch the third set tomorrow. So I go and I look and I see Mike one. I'm like, all right, that's to be expected. But to see what I saw, to see Clay Davis play three incredible racks and get himself up 3-0 <laughs> with Mike making a very uncharacteristic mistake on an eight ball that actually allowed it to get to 3-0, you didn't see happen. Yeah. That goes, that really goes to show you talking about, you know, wearing down, you know, in that third set and then having to have that fight and that hard to get back. So Clay gets to the point where he's up 3-0. I've seen that part of Clay when he's hype and he's ready to win something. Then Mike starts having a couple of shots, starts making some things. Clay gets that thought in his head, okay, now I just need that one mistake. I just need that one mistake. And one mistake never came. I'm not going to say Mike played it perfect, but he did what he needed to do, and he got some incredible rolls off of a break. Into I'm not going to get into it because I'm not going to act like I play with these guys, so I'm not going to say what I would or would not have done. <laughs> but I guarantee you there's at least 35 opinions about that situation with a push or don't push in the final uh-huh. game. And you know what? No matter what, I think Clay is going to live just fine with his decision. And, you know, it just wasn't his day. It was his day, but it wasn't his day to hoist the trophy. And the professional player wins again. Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, I was so heartbroken for Clay. But that's part, to a point, that's part of the game. We've all been there. We've been on both sides of that, you know, or at least most of us have. Um so without with all that being said, you know, heart broke for Clay, but you know what, Mike, you did what you were there to do. As in congrats on three in a row. I'm not gonna take that away from you. Yeah, I told Clay I was like, I think it's just the pool gods didn't want you to win this one. I think that's what happened. But you know, congratulations to Mike Davis on three straight pool series victories. Congrats on Clay Davis for a second place. Um, and let's don't forget Kevin Candido getting third and Eddie Little getting fourth. Uh, that pretty much wraps up our thoughts on uh, the Irish Q non-ball tournament. So let me thank our sponsors one more time. Deadstroke Media, Inkwell Design, John Patera at Remax Metro Realty, Paul Harrison Custom Cues, Portico Licensed General Contractors, Pool Doctors, and Premier Imports of Charlotte. Thank you guys so much. It was a super fun tournament. Uh, that's the last time that uh, we'll be at Irish Q the rest of this year as we don't have them on our schedule anymore. But it was definitely a lot of fun being there uh, four times this year, I do believe. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, Let's look over at our point standings a little bit here. I'm going to go ahead and read out the top five, because this is really about the only five people that still have a shot at first place with three events left. Fifth place, you have Eddie Little. Fourth place, Hunter White. Third place, Renal Bott. Second place, Clay Davis. First place, Mike Davis. Uh, Mike with a 130-point lead on Clay. I think uh, Mike is uh, getting uh, in a spot where he might, you know, one more win, obviously, will probably do the trick for him. Um, Pat, I mean, is the points going kind of what how you expected? Yeah, I think so. I think that if, I think that's just that's what the top five is supposed to have been, uh, considering the, the performances that we've seen this year. I think so as well. Uh, let's go ahead and mention the three of us, though. I'm in sixth place. Uh, Brandon's in 17th place. And uh, Pat, you're right behind Brandon in 18th place. So there you go. Well, let's go. Uh, move to four spots, baby. <laughs> Brandon, what are you thinking about the points, man? Are you still I'm excited thinking, for it? I'm thinking all Pat has to do is show up and uh, he's going to pass me. <laughs> well, they, they, that actually helps. But uh, it'll definitely be fun to see what happens. we got three points events left. Uh, the next points event will actually be um, – October 5th, which will be a 10 ball event at Smoke and Q. That's going to be a lot of fun. We'll have that, uh, we'll have that flyer out soon. But our next tournament will be uh, September 14th, which will be $1,000 added at Brass Tap in Raleigh, our first trip up there. It'll be non ball, the same format that you just watched at Irish Q. Um, just quick thoughts, really quick on that tournament as the player list has been posted. Um, Pat, what are you thinking about the, uh, the tournament at Brass Tap and our first trip up there? I've been waiting on this for the past two months, man. I've been waiting on this. I cannot wait. Uh, I'm driving up there six o'clock Saturday morning. Going to pull right. Probably going to stop at some IHOP, get a little breakfast in me, and then I am going to be ready to go. Also, I will say that this has to be the strongest field 
that the pool series has had since its inception and it ain't even close yeah, it's for the 32 man fields. This is going to be a pretty tough field for sure. Brandon, what are you thinking? Uh, sadly, you're not going to make a trip with her. Oh, but, oh, no. What, what are you don't, thinking? Do not worry. Everything <laughs> is under control. There will not be <laughs> one minute of college football watch this Saturday. I do not care. Let it be what it is because I, I'm not going to name them because I want y'all to tune in, but you've got some absolute firepower going to be on that stream. Yeah. Okay. You guys just wait. There's nowhere else I'd rather watch. I will if I'm not helping a customer, you know, <laughs> buy their buy their product, then I'm going to be watching this pool series the whole way, listening to you guys making snide comments and remarks because that's just what I do. <clears throat> so with all that being said, tune in Saturday. It's going to be a great one. Yeah. And for all of you watching, make sure y'all tune in. Um, we got. You know, the live action will be on our Facebook page. You can also look up the pool series on YouTube, look up the TPS reports on YouTube. Guys, as always, this has been a lot of fun. I cannot wait until the next show where we get to talk about the Raleigh tournament and talk mm. about what I think will be some awesome matches on the stream. So, as always, that's Pat Dixon live from the Bat Cave. This is Brandon Mullis. This is Justin Clark. <laughs> and we definitely appreciate you. And uh, we'll catch you later. Later on. Till the next time.